Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out-of-box review for the HG Iron Blood Orphans Gundam Fluoros. So here we've got this very interesting, very pink mobile suit. The color scheme obviously coming from the same Ryusei Go color scheme that we saw on the Grey's Kai, as well as... Uh, well, no, Al, that was it. Anyway, um, I personally don't care about the color. I think this pink looks fine. Uh, I'll probably want to paint it in a different color. Uh, not that I don't like the pink, but I think just... Um, I like to change things up, and I think this could look uh, better kind of more interesting for me and just kind of a different color, I don't know. Uh, it's not really my favorite for this particular design anyway, so yeah, really interesting mobile suit here and it does some uh, interesting things. It also has a lot of stickers. This is definitely one of the more sticker heavy Gundams from the series. It's not quite as bad as the Rebake Full City, but it's definitely not great. Uh, it has some very, very large stickers. So, I mean, small little stickers, as that's for like small little color apps, is not really a big deal on an HG because they can't do that much part separation on an HG kit. But to have huge stickers like this one has, like you see those pink parts on the back part here and here. Uh, that's just all big, huge pink wraparound stickers there that really, really would have been better and totally possible to have those as just pink parts. Just That's just four or more pink parts they would have had to make, probably. Uh, and unfortunately, they did not on Bandai's part. So, not really going to fault the kit uh, too much for that uh, because the detail is all there and all it's, it's all like nice details and everything. It's just, uh, it just would have been nice if that was separate parts, just would have been making the uh, painting process a little bit easier, but uh, relatively easy to mask those parts, I guess it's going to be. So, anyway, just also want to say a big thank you to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store, as always, for sending me this kit to share with you guys. Those of you living in Australia, you know, uh, do check out their site, the link is down below. Uh, so, yeah, let's just get into it, because uh, this is a pretty interesting kit and I mean in terms of like the building process and everything it's just kind of the same as uh, building most of the Gundams in the series you just have a lot more going on here with this backpack but the actual main mobile suit is uh, relatively pretty similar so here in the head we've got these stickers here on the side for those eyes stickers there that wrap around the back of there for the white parts uh, on well there we go just get rid of that that's kind of easy for the moment here on the face, got stickers there for the eyes as well, and then a sticker for the camera. There, let me just stick this beef in back on. All right, there we go, thank you very much. And then here on the front, we got this little part moves up and down, that's more for like the kind of transformation. We'll see more about that a little bit later. As for the shoulders here, uh, we have yellow parts that stick out on the front and back, but then here on the side of the shoulder, that's a yellow sticker, unfortunately, that kind of wraps around there and wraps around there not very well. I'll say this side of the shoulder part also moves a little bit up and down, but not really sure that's something you're really going to care too much about. But it does help to uh, let the arm come up here further so the arm can go all the way up to there, which is really nice. The articulation of this kit is going to be, I mean, good, just like all the other HD Iron Blood Orphan Gundams are really nicely articulated. Uh, joint here in the elbow is going to give you more than 90 degrees, but not too much more really in this case. Then we have this kind of bit here on the back of the arm. We'll come back to that later. Uh, then here in the waist, the whole... There goes that V-fin again, dang. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole thing is going to move a little bit back and forth there at the top and then just bulge right at the bottom. So you can move that all around here in that tiny little waist section. Skirt armor is uh, non-existent, so don't really need to worry too much about that. The legs will rotate at the top and then move up and down, all fine. There's no hindrance there, of course. I uh, get a nice bend there in the knee. Nice color separation here with that yellow part in there. The feet, again as well, all to be expected. The toes will move down like that. Underneath the feet, you do have some hollow spaces there. Uh, so those tiny little toes will move down like that, up to about there, and then the ankles will rotate side to side as much as you really want, so there's no problem with that. I like this kind of uh, extra bit here on the back of the feet, it kind of helps it add to that kind of like uh, heavy firepower look, like it's going to need a 
really solid stance. Then just here going around to the backpack, obviously we have these big huge cannons. So just this, uh, just the kind of main cannons themselves can move up and down like that and then you can move kind of this whole thing and what this is going to do is just fold together and link up together like that. That's more for like the transformed uh, state which we're going to take a look at here in a moment but you can do that just in it's just Gundam form as well you can do it like that. Uh, then you'll notice we have these other little guns here underneath. Let me just move the arm out of the way here a little bit. Uh, then these can just be f uh, you can just swing this part around and just have them just kind of sticking forward like that so you can have them just kind of firing without actually holding the rifles like that uh, just kind of sticking out from underneath the arm but then if you want let's see you can take this off here kind of just have to remove it from this red part there and then just the gun is just like that it's gonna have this kind of unsightly peg on there unfortunately but then you can just flip out the handle like that and then you can actually just hold that in the hand so it's a little bit similar to like the Hyakuri uh, which had the rifles which will just like mount onto the like back head and then you could also actually just have them held in the hand as well so you can have some options there with that with those guns uh, so that's pretty cool and you have two of those obviously one on each side uh, so that's pretty much it so in terms of the accessories for this kit um, you're looking at them that's it. It literally comes with nothing else but that, what you're seeing there. So, uh, that's it. I mean, that's simple, I guess. Really would have been nice if this had some different hand options, but, you know, we can hope that maybe someday open hands for this kid or something might be released in a future option part set, but that's probably not going to happen. If you wanted different hands for this, you, you're you pretty much just out of luck. But because I bought this when Bandai was doing their uh, campaign, I did get this um, extra base in mind. I talked about this with the Gundam uh, Vidar review. I got a blue one of this. With this kit, I got just this clear one. It came with these uh, Galahorn stickers here. So I'll use this here for the rest of the uh, review. This has two points of articulation here at the top. So one that will turn this way, then we'll, we'll turn the opposite way. So these are nice uh, little simple bases. Really hope that Bandai gives out more of these in the future. But in the meantime, this was kind of a pretty cool thing that they did with these. But I suppose we need to talk about the transformation to shelling mode. So the first thing we need to do is just fold these cannons back like I've already done with that one. Uh, with this one here, I'll just do the same. That should just uh, fold back and line up like that with there. Uh, then we just need to fold up that little thing there on the chest. And then it says like to like line up the shoulders. I don't really know like how important that is. It's just kind of like making sure the shoulders are kind of in a, the correct position, I guess, just straight. And then you're just bringing the arms up. Then taking these guys underneath the arms and folding them down and forward like that. So those will flip forward like that. And then again here on the other side, just like so, shoop, shoop, like that. Then we're just going to turn the waist 180 degrees, like so. And we're supposed to point the head down. And there goes the V-fin again. I'm just going to leave that V-fin off for the time being. Uh, just going to bend the legs like that, backwards. And then this part here in the center of the backpack, we'll just bring that forward and cover up the head like so and that's supposed to be up like that and then the last thing is just taking off these tips at the end of the cannon and then just rotating the, them the other way around so what that does is you can see there's uh, kind of that kind of effect there when you do it this way that part is covered but then when you flip it around uh, then that part there is exposed, so it just gives you a just adds a little bit of length to the cannon, just makes it look like uh, like this part is kind of extended. Uh, so I guess that's it. That's the shelling mode. I'm trying not to be unfair to this, but that is just the worst. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't look good at all. Um, like, look at that. From the front, I'll give you like, it looks, it's like almost passable, but then like if you just see it from any other angle, 
It just looks so bad. It looks so silly. Um, yeah. And the worst part about this, uh, this eye detail here, and then on the V-fin as well, is that's not a molded uh, design. So if you don't have the sticker, you just kind of have to just you just kind of have to make that up. There's no like line to trace that to paint it on. But anyway, uh, the other thing that kind of sucks about this mode is that stuff just doesn't really get into position very well. Like the shoulder armor being really big. Uh, hits the backpack there parts really easily. Uh, also, the the whole kind of point of this mode is for like shelling, right? So the uh, cannons should be kind of like very useful in this mode, but this is as high as they can go. You can't point the cannons any higher than this angle. So if you wanted to have them uh, pointed up, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you know what I mean? Uh, more up, then uh, you're not really able to without doing some modification to this because they're running into the part that's there in the center part of the backpack. So, uh, I just can't recommend this mode at all. Uh, but I mean, you know, if, if you like the way that this looks and this looks like something that's kind of appealing to you, then good for you. But I think the majority of people are probably going to be like me and not really be too into this. So for comparison, here he is with the HG Iron Blood Orphans Gundam Barbatos Lupus. And yeah, they're going to be looking like a pretty cool set, both looking like Gundams from the same universe, obviously. Just one quick little thing here, I mentioned before that there's no articulation in the skirt armor of the Flaros, but actually the side skirts do move up and down a little bit. It's not really uh, anything to really mention too much about, but just will mention that anyway. So yeah, in terms of negatives of this kit, I mean, honestly, the shelling mode is is by far the worst thing about this kit for me. Uh, and then those big stickers, like I said, on there are not really that great, but, you know, could be worse things. The overall articulation of the kit is really nice. The weapons and accessories, I mean, it's got them all there. Uh, the huge cannons on the back and then the other kind of smaller guns there on the side are cool, and then you can take those off and use them as rifles. So, um, still, basically, I think this is an awesome Gundam that you should just never put into shelling mode. So yeah, that's gonna be about really all I have to say about this Gundam. I mean, uh, it's a cool kit uh, from Iron Blood Orphans, and it's very unique, and it's got a really in a unique color scheme, sort of, and it's got a really unique transformation, and those huge weapons are definitely something that's pretty unique in the Iron Blood Orphans universe. I remember when we first saw like the prototype of this Gundam, uh, I thought it looked really cool, and, but I thought it looked kind of odd that it had these those huge things on the back of his forearms, like those things there. So I thought, okay, that's just kind of like shields. And then we saw like the Rebake Full City had a really similar thing. It had really similar kind of shields on the back of its forearms. Um, those ended up being just kind of shields, basically, and they just kind of covered up that extra kind of like knuckle feature there inside uh, the forearm of the Rebake Full City. In this case, they ended up being parts for that shelling mode, which is pretty ugly. So I think on my kit, I'll probably get rid of those uh, whenever I actually get around to painting this kit. I'll probably just get rid of those shields on the back of the forearms and just do without that and just have just the arms, like just those forearms just by themselves. Uh, I think looks better with, with just them being just kind of thinner without that extra big piece of armor just slapped onto the back of them. It makes a cool kind of like shield, I guess, uh, but yeah, I'll probably just do without that. Anyway, that's just a kind of personal thing. Anyway, overall, it's pretty nice kits. Not really anything uh, too uh, crazy about it. I wouldn't say, like, definitely run out and buy this. I definitely uh, liked the Gundam Vidar more than this, but this one definitely does have that uh, cool aspect of just having big guns. So if you're the kind of person that likes big guns, then uh, you can check this out. So this one is definitely more sticker-heavy, slightly more sticker-heavy than the Gundam Vidar as well. That one also kind of had a lot of stickers, but... Anyway, uh, don't know if we're going to be getting a 1-100 scale of this. I would say probably not, but, I don't know, could, could be cool, I guess, if we do. Uh, I think there's other designs I would prefer to have a 1-100 scale version of, though. But uh, that's it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.